You're watching World Insight with me, Tian Wei. Coming up on today's program, former WTO Secretary General Basca Lamy talks about China's continuing course toward reform and opening up. How do you assess and later in the program, a conversation with Olympic skating coach Li Yan, whose speed skating team brought home the long gold from the Pyeongchang Olympic Games. For interviews, right after this break. Come back, you're watching World Inside with me, Tian Wei, coming to you live Monday to Friday on CGTN. Trade tensions, that's the thing we have been talking about in recent weeks a lot between China and the United States, have shimmered over the past few weeks. U.S. President Donald Trump, the White House, made a surprise announcement that he is considering an additional 100 billion U.S. dollars worth of tariffs on China last week, sending jitters over economic growth. Earlier, the White House also proposed tariffs on the list of 1,300 Chinese products worth about 50 billion U.S. dollars. Beijing matched the new U.S. duties with retaliatory tariffs against the U.S. products. That at least is a possibility. As the former director general of the WTO, the World Trade Organization, Baska Lamy, shared his views on how to trade better under the WTO system with me recently in Boao. Let's listen in. What do you make of the latest rounds of exchanges regarding the U.S.-China trade dispute? The messages you're reading coming from the U.S. side and the messages you're reading coming from the Chinese side, sir. Trying to read the U.S. side is difficult because they give signals in different directions, sometimes very confrontational, mm. sometimes more amicable. So it's difficult to interpret. Is that a strategy? Maybe, maybe, but I'm not sure. It's for one to guess whether the U.S. are after preparing a negotiation, so building a bargaining power, or whether they are after wrecking the multilateral trading system in order to get rid of the WTO, which they believe does not work for them. Now, whether it's option A or option B, I don't know. Seen from the Chinese side, the reaction so far has been measured, and what we've heard from uh, President Xi Jinping is that China is ready for a new wave of opening on trade, on investment, in services, in manufacturers, in protecting intellectual property. So whether this will appease the tension or not, I don't know. I hope so. But the good thing is that the Chinese president is now on the offensive on opening the economy and on doing this in a multilateral way mm -hmm. so that this opening will benefit not only the U.S. but also others and notably the Europeans. Talking about the trade issue, to what extent and under what kind of time frame do you think, Mr. Lamy, that some of the issues that we have touched on that has been brought to the WTO is likely to come up with some kinds of result so that all sides know where they are. Islami. I mean, if you talk about U.S. taking China to the dispute settlement in WTO or China taking the U.S., which is what they are doing, the average time for a full adjudication system is roughly 18 months or two years. Mm. So it has to be first looked at at the first instance, and then usually there is an appeal uh, at the level of the appellate body, which, by the way, the U.S. for the moment have paralyzed in refusing to nominate judges. So this issue will have to be settled also. Mm. On the other hand, what can the other members of the WTO do when, for example, one member of the WTO, the United States, refused to appoint the uh, appellate uh, judges, what would the other members do and can do? They have several options. One being to decide by majority, yes. because after all, this is a procedural decision. Uh, that's a possibility. Another possibility, if the U.S. refuse to appoint judges, i.e. try to kill the appellate body in the WTO, 
the other members can decide that they will appoint their own judges, they will abide by the determinations of this court, whether the US are part of it or not. Mm. This is a more extreme option, but it's an option which I think they should have in order not to be blackmailed. When was the last time such option was being exercised? It never happened so far in the WTO, not least because the US so far have been one of the pillars of the World Trade Organization. You heard Mr. Lamy at the opening ceremony. Every leader that they believe protectionism should not be the driving force of our economy. And they believe that the world trade should not be decided by one country and one country's decision alone. So where do you think the WTO, as a result of the deadlock that we are seeing right now, uh, is going from here? Particularly the largest economy, the United States, is taking such an attitude. Well, there are basically two possible options. Yes. One, let's sit around the table. U.S. has problem with the rule book. Fine. Others also have problem with mm -hmm. the rule book. I'm sure China would like the rule book to be more stringent to discipline U.S. agricultural subsidies. I'm sure the EU will be fine with some sort of limitation of intellectual property for, for medicines. Uh, in order to make them available at a reasonable cost. Mm. So, U.S. may have its problem, China will have its problem, EU will have its problem, India will have its problem, right. we all have our problems. Let's sit around the table. That's option one. List the problems and deal with them. That's option one. Now, if the U.S. are after wrecking the system, if they want to kill WTO, then other WTO members need to coalize in order to protect this uh, insurance company against protectionism, which we've been building uh, consistently for the last 70 years. So that's a more extreme option, yeah. but I think it should be on the table so that, so that a proper negotiation does not happen uh, with a gun uh, on our head. But Mr. Lamy, can I say both of these options are already with quite some difficulties, even the first option. Having all the parties sitting around the table, now we have parties refused to sit around the table, but rather want to deal with it bilaterally, not just with one country, but with several other countries we have seen over the past few months. So even option one cannot be an option. I don't think there's any problem with opening trade multilaterally, regionally, bilaterally. Provided the cat catches mice, I don't mind the color of the cat. Mm. Great so. quote. As long as trade obstacles are eroded, whether you do it multilaterally or regionally, the problem is if the multilateral option was to be closed, that would be a big problem. So the essential for the moment is to keep the multilateral option alive, to keep the WTO alive as a system right. which is more predictable, which is more fair, and which is more stable than bilateral relations. When you are willing to deal with it multilaterally, the, the other party is absent. And it seems that one of the big chunk of the world economy is absent from the table. So what can be done? Is the okay. option one, this once is, again, is this is, this is why there, we need to have option two, which is a WTO minus US if the US don't want to be part of a multilateral system. What does that mean? When would you know that the other party is unwilling to come to the table? When will be the deadline? And when will be the time that all parties will come to a consensus? Let's just do it the other way around. The price which every WTO member has paid is I reform my system for the price of getting a collective insurance against protectionism. So what binds WTO members together is that they refuse protectionism. If one country wants to go protectionist, A, for the moment the rules do not allow that. If this country wants to dispense itself from these rules, then others have to say, we keep together within the roof of our insurance company against protectionism.
Now you see Chinese President Xi Jinping at the opening ceremony of Boao, trying to take a position in which China is willingly to take measures, for example, about its own opening up measures, whether it is in the uh, service sector or the auto industry or some of the other areas. You also see Chinese side is trying to pledge that it is not willing to form so-called small interest groups. It is not willing to work on so-called small albacus, the so-called small calculations, only based on its own national interest alone. And you also see China do not want to, as the Chinese president said, force others to buy or for force others to sell. So I wondered whether others are also going to have the guts to say so and to work so and to at least have a goal of such. I believe most countries on this planet, for the moment with the exception of US, are of the view that trade opening is a win-win situation. That we are not in a world where imports are bad and exports are good. This might have been true 100 years ago, it's not true anymore. Which is why, which is why it has to work collectively with a sort of give and take trade off, mm. which is why China announcing that it's ready to move in this direction, I think is a, is a, is a big element now. The question is whether it's announcing or whether it's enforcing. Inevitably, by the US, by EU, by others will be fine, this is good. We are happy to hear this. When will this happen? How will this happen? And that's going to be the next question. And I'm sure President Xi Jinping knows that and is prepared to answer this question. Mm. Mr. Lamy, before we go, final question for you. You have extremely rich experience working within the WTO system for years. And you have witnessed the ups and downs of our trading system over the years. What do you think? is the most important thing that would help people to build confidence in it. I think uh, what's happening with this U.S. offensive creates a situation where the value of WTO, which might have been underestimated because true, it's difficult uh, to agree on uh, new rules, and there is a long debate on whether China is a developed economy or a developing yeah. economy, depending whether you are developed or developing, the amount of opening which others are entitled to expect may be yeah. different. So it's complex, it's lengthy, it sometimes is frustrating, but we realize, like we do it for an insurance company, that if the company goes bust, we have a big problem. Yeah. So the present situation has one merit, which is that it reinforces the value of the multilateral trading system. Mr. Lamy, it's always a pleasure at a time of critical moments to listen to your words and your thoughts. Thank you My so much pleasure. for your insights. Very good. Thank you, Thank you sir. Très bien. Really appreciate it. Good. Former Director General of the World Trade Organization, Mr. Bascal Lamy.